Hello, my name is Merlin Gable. I'm a Senior Policy Advisor at BMA Cymru Wales, and this is a short presentation that explains the SAS contract reform process. It covers a brief overview of the negotiations which took place during 2020, the key changes to the specialty doctor contract, the features of the new specialist grade, how the choice exercise for existing SAS doctors will work, and how you as an individual doctor can make an informed choice about whether the new contract is right for you. Further resources and information are available on the BMA and the NHS Wales employers websites and BMA members can access employment advice by contacting the BMA directly. Between February 2020 and January 2021, the BMA and the governments and NHS employer bodies of Wales, Northern Ireland and England negotiated two new contracts, a reformed 2021 specialty doctor contract and a new specialist contract, a senior, more autonomous role. The new contracts were approved by a referendum of SAS BMA members in Wales in February 2021, and the new contracts consequently went live on the 1st of April 2021. Existing SAS doctors now have six months to decide whether they wish to move to one of the new contracts. First, we will run through the most important changes made to the contracts. Again, full details of all changes are available on the BMA website in the Framework Agreement document for Wales. Perhaps most importantly, the Specialty Doctor contract has a new pay scale with significantly less time taken to reach the top, only 12 years rather than the current 17, and a higher starting salary. To the right of the slide, you can see the figures for the five pay points as of 2023-24 when the contract is fully implemented. Between now and 23-24, there is a transitional pay scale for new specialty doctors and those who choose to transfer to this contract, the details of which can be found again in the framework agreement. This pay scale will increase career average earnings and significantly increases early career earnings. Pay progression is every three years and depends upon fulfilling the criteria for progression. We expect the vast majority of doctors to have no problem with this at all. Secondly, plane time has been extended slightly. Previously, it was 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Monday to Friday. On both new contracts, it will be 7 a.m. to 9 p.m., Monday to Friday. This doesn't mean that you will necessarily have to work these hours, just that it will be cheaper for your employer to schedule you to do so. On-call provisions have changed slightly too. There will now be two categories of on-call work. Category A, which includes complex telemedicine and traveling into your place of work during an on-call period, and category B, which includes telephone advice. We expect most SAS doctors to be performing category A on-call work, which attracts a higher pay supplement than in the current contracts for on-call work. A suite of safeguards are being introduced to ensure that rotors are safe and support well-being. These include having no more than 40% of working time in out-of-hours time, working a maximum of 13 weekends in a year, and a maximum of four consecutive nights or long day shifts. We have agreed with NHS Wales employers that these should be implemented as soon as possible and in any case by the 1st of April 2022 in all job plans of doctors on the new contract. We have clarified the role of the contractual one SPA to only be for job planning and meeting the requirements of appraisal and revalidation. This makes clear that any other activity that is taking place in SPA time requires further sessions of SPA time to be included in the job plan. This should help you facilitate conversations with your employer about accessing additional SPA time as recommended in the Wales Good Practice Guide, which recommends 20% of the job plan be devoted to continuing professional development and in the SAS Charter in Wales. The contrast, contract explicitly cites these two pieces of guidance as best practice in this area. Another key change specifically for associate specialists who are thinking about moving to the new specialist contract is that there is no equivalent right to opt out of routine out of hours work that exists in the current associate specialist contract. Instead, this would have to be done through occupational health processes and by obtaining reasonable adjustments for a demonstrable issue through the work plan. Clearly, one of the most exciting prospects in this new deal is the introduction of the specialist grade, the new senior SAS grade that opens up career progression for specialty doctors. As stated previously, the terms and conditions are basically the same in most areas as in the specialty doctors. 
the main differences are in the pay and in the scope of practice of the doctor and their role. To be eligible for a specialist role, you must have 12 years experience post primary medical qualification and six years in a relevant specialty in a SAS grade or equivalent. You can see the pay levels on the right. These sit roughly between the specialty doctor and the consultant pay scales, albeit with an overlap with consultants at the top of the scale. Again, pay progression is every three years and is dependent upon demonstrating ongoing professional development. You'll notice the top of the pay scale is lower than the top of the current associate specialist scale. However, any associate specialist who moves to the new contract will have their current pay level protected on a marked time basis until such a time as the specialist pay scale overtakes that value. It is also important to make clear what the specialist grade is not. It is not a regrading process for specialty doctors like took place in 2008. No specialty doctor has an automatic right to become a specialist. Instead, health boards will create specialist posts according to service need. You will need to apply for a post and be successful in a competitive process, just like consultants. However, as part of the contract reform package agreed with Welsh Government, there is funding available for these posts, so health boards should be creating them soon. Clearly, we want to avoid a situation where senior and highly skilled specialty doctors who have not been able to progress in the past 13 years since the associate specialist grade close remain in their existing role, even whilst they are performing at the level expected of a specialist. To help address this, the BMA insisted upon a more robust acting up allowance within the contract, which ensures that when you are acting up for a colleague's absence, then you receive appropriate pay. The BMA has also produced guidance to aid specialty doctors in having conversations with their employers to demonstrate that they are fulfilling the role of a specialist and acting at a level higher than expected of them as a specialty doctor. Although this does not give them an automatic right to regrading, it does demonstrate that there is existing demand within their team for someone delivering at the level of a specialist, which advances the argument for the creation of a specialist post that they would presumably then be well positioned to apply for. For more information about the specialist grade, the competencies required and the duties of the role, please refer to the BMA website. Individual choice for existing doctors in joining the new contracts was secured as part of the negotiations. Therefore, the new contracts will only apply mandatorily to new starters, including all those moving health board within Wales, except for associate specialists for whom transferability agreements already exist. For existing SAS doctors, there will be a choice exercise. Existing specialty doctors have the opportunity from the 1st of April to the 30th of September 2021 to express interest in the new specialty doctor contract. Existing associate specialist doctors have the same window of opportunity to express interest in moving to the new specialist contract. Specialty doctors do not have the right to request to move to the new specialist contract. Everyone who is eligible should now have been contacted by their employer. If you think you are eligible, but have not been contacted, then we recommend you contact your medical workforce team. You must respond by the 30th of September if you are interested in moving over to the new contracts. However, no other action needs to be completed by this point, and the expression of interest is non-binding. Failing to express interest during this window will result in you losing your right to backdated pay increases to the 1st of April 2021. If you wish to move to the new contract in the future, it will be by separate negotiation with your employer. Where a doctor expresses interest, the employer will arrange to undertake a job planning process with the doctor. If the job plan is agreed, this will serve as the new job plan for the doctor who will have 21 days to accept this job plan and move to the new contract on a timeline agreed with their employer. There is no obligation to accept the job plan, which may be subject to an appeals process if agreement cannot be reached. If no agreement can be reached through appeal, or the doctor chooses not to engage the appeals process, then they will remain on their existing contract. If the job plan is agreed and the doctor moves to the new contract, the work they performed on their old job plan from the 1st of April 2021 until the date of transfer will be valued according to the pay values of the new contract. Where this results in an underpayment, this will be paid to the doctor at their next pay date. 
where as a result of the difference in basic pay or the reduction in value of work between 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. on a weekday, the doctor has been overpaid, this will be deducted from the value of the underpayment. In the circumstance that the overpayment is greater than the underpayment and so a deduction in salary would be due, we have agreed with NHS Wales employers that this money will not be claimed back by the employer. In other words, nobody will experience financial detriment between the 1st of April and their date of transfer as a result of choosing to move to the new contracts. The Welsh Government has announced a 3% pay uplift as this year's pay award for doctors. Whilst this applies to the 2008 SAS contracts, it does not apply to the new 2021 SAS contracts, which instead are subject to a multi-year pay deal. This has produced some significant unintended effects for exist existing specialty doctors who wish to move to the new contract. Whilst the transitional pay scale was designed with the principle that no doctors should see a pay cut during the transitional period, due to the pay award, this is no longer the case for many doctors. In the first year of transition, moving to the new contract will be comparatively less favourable, resulting in a nominal reduction in pay for doctors at many of the pay points. Therefore, we recommend that specialty doctors consult our updated pay explainer document very carefully and understand if they are in one of the majority of pay points which is negatively affected. If so, it may be more in their interests to discuss moving to the new contract with their employer at a later date, i.e. from the 1st of April 2022 or onwards. However, it's important to remember that it does remain the case that for many, transferring to the new contracts will still represent a benefit in terms of basic pay over time. For those at many pay points, there are significant pay increases in the second or third year of the deal, and the shorter pay scale ensures faster progression to the top of the pay scale in future years going forwards. For associate specialists, there is no longer any good incentive to move to the new specialist grade contract as the agreed mark time pay protection applies to salaries as of the 31st of March 2021 and so therefore does not take into account the post pay award uplifted salary figures. Therefore, we do not recommend that associate specialists move to the new specialist contract unless they have other strongly compelling reasons to do so. We are calling upon Welsh Government to offer pay protection to those transferring to the new contracts so that they don't see their pay reduced in the short term and can continue to benefit from the increases in pay thereafter whilst ensuring the intended timeline for transition remains on track. We'll be working with employers and government to clarify the rights of doctors wishing to transition outside of the window of opportunity to ensure that specialty doctors can benefit in the later years of the deal. Clearly, the most important question for many of you at this stage will be, how do I make the right decision about whether or not to move to one of the new contracts? This is a very personal decision and will depend entirely upon your own personal circumstances, your pay level, job plan and your priorities. Unfortunately, it is not practical for us to give personalised advice to everyone. However, we can point out a few different things it might be worth you thinking about when you make your decision. Perhaps most important is to understand what will happen to your pay. You can use the tables at the end of the framework agreement and our pay explainer document to understand what will happen over the next three years as the pay levels transition over to the new structure shown at the start of this presentation. During this period, if you move over to the new contract, your pay will change up to twice a year. It will change every April until April 2023 as the transitional pay structure moves. And it may also change on your existing incremental date which will now be called a pay progression date, if you move up to a new pay point on the scale, which happens every three years. This is all contained in one table in the agreement, and so it should be easy to understand. However, it is worth looking a bit further into the future than this too. As the new contract contains a much shorter pay scale, reaching the top pay point in 12 years rather than 17, it is worth, worth considering if you are likely to benefit in the longer term by this faster pay progression. Typically, this will be the case if you're currently on the lower pay points of the contract. This can all be compared against your existing pay progression journey if you didn't move and you'll be able to make an informed choice. Importantly, as just mentioned, it is important to consider the effect of this year's DDRB uplift and whether you would be liable for a pay reduction as a result in 2021, in which case it may be worth discussing whether your employer will permit you to move over in the second year of the deal when many more stand to benefit. Also bear in mind that those who do not move over will be subject to the yearly pay increases via the DDRB for years two and three as well, whereas those on the new contracts will be subject 
to special pay arrangements until 2024 that removes them from the DDRB. After 2024, they will be subject to the DDRB again. Other factors may also be equally, if not more important to you. Consider how important the possibility of more frequent work between 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. would be to you. Again, this isn't guaranteed, but the changes make it more affordable for an employer to do so. However, as always, this will be subject to job planning. Think about whether the increased clarity on the purpose of SBA time in the contract will help you access the SBA time that you need or want for extra activities you wish to undertake or are already undertaking. Do you work frequent on call shifts? Will these be worth more under the new contract? As you can see, there are many factors and it isn't possible for us to give clear advice to everybody on what is the best thing to do. That said, we do think that at this stage, it is worth most of you expressing an interest and undertaking the job planning process with your employer to explore what might be on offer, bearing in mind the possibility of a pay reduction this year due to the DDRB. For associate specialists, in the majority of circumstances, there is fairly little to gain by moving to the new specialist grade. This was acknowledged by all parties during the negotiations, but the new grade isn't for associate specialists to benefit from. It is designed as a pay progression route for specialty doctors, so this is to be expected. Pay protection is available for associate specialists who do choose to move. This won't take into account yearly pay increases via the DDRB, but will mean that you won't experience a pay drop by moving over. However, remember that you will lose the right to opt out of routine out of hours work that you currently have. So in summary, as stated just now, make sure you think about what your pay will look like if you move and if you stay on your current contract, not just over the next few years, but over a longer time period. And think about your whole paycheck, not just basic pay. Also think about other elements of the contract that may or may not benefit you. There are further resources that the BMA have made available to help doctors make this decision. I highly recommend that you read and digest them. There is plenty of time to make a decision prior to the 30th of September. And again, remember that this is only an informal expression of interest. You can back out at any time if you don't think the new contract is right for you. Whilst all this is ongoing, the BMA continues to work hard on your behalf to secure the advances and positive recognition this contract reform brings to SAS doctors. We are currently working continuously with employers and with government on the implementation of the contracts and monitoring this closely to ensure consistency across Wales. We are finalising the details of the new SAS advocate roles, an exciting new role in every health board that will act as a point of contact and an advocate and voice for SAS doctors at a senior level. We are advocating for locally employed doctors who are stuck on long-term or permanent local contracts to be offered the national TCS as per the SAS Charter. We will work with employers to update the long-standing Wales Good Practice Guide to ensure SAS doctors have access to sufficient SBA time and other development opportunities. We will also be producing guidance to assist SAS doctors in accessing secondment opportunities to secure the necessary experience for career development, whether it is CESA or applying for a specialist post that is your goal. Finally, we are working with government and employers to allocate £340,000 of additional funding provided by the Welsh Government during the first year of contract implementation solely for the benefit of SAS doctors and we'll let you know more about this and the other things mentioned when there is more news. I hope this short presentation has been helpful. In conclusion, you must make sure that you can understand the contractual changes in the new contract that is applicable to you. You should work out how your pay will change in the short term and in the long term before you make your choice. But make sure to express interest by the 30th of September 2021. You can always decline the job plan offered and always remain on your existing terms and pay if you decide that the new contract is not right for you. Please visit bma.org.uk forward slash SAS for additional resources and information on the new contracts. Thank you.